third Sunday of Easter. It's also the third Sunday of the month. Every third Sunday of the month we pray the order of Mass. It's on page 219. So we'll follow the order of service on page 219. Uh, we begin our service so with our first hymn, 463. 463.
your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I will show you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up, and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. Praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. The evening may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You may be seated. We sing our next hymn, 483. 483.
plunged to Peter and John. All the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect help in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be God. This lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Our final reading for today is from Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your heart? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of rolled fish. And he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, 
and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. We turn in our hymnal to page 222. Page 222. And we sing together the response for Easter. Page 222. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. deeper, 
How do I fit within the world around me? Where is my place? How do I relate? What is my purpose? Who am I? See, and this question plagues all of us in one form or another. Really, because the answers are absolutely infinite. Who am I? Well, there are a few answers that we can be absolutely 100% sure of. I'm a Christian. I'm an American. I am a man. I am a son. I am a member of the human race. So who am I? Well, then there are those answers to that question that we <coughs> must admit to, but that we are not proud of. I'm a sinner. I'm an addict. I am an enabler. I am better than other people. I'm lost. See, these identities that we label ourselves with can so easily bring us down. You know, the one that defines us most of all, the one that marks us for the whole world to see. And here's the thing, Satan would love for you to think that because of those identities of sin, that plague all of us in one form or, or another, Satan would like you to think that that causes us to be unworthy of any other identity. But he is wrong. He deceives. God has given you an identity above all others. Who am I? We heard it in 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. That we should be called children of God. And so we are. It's so simple, really. We are God's children. That is the identity that St. John would have you have as the most important in your existence in this world. Your identity is at its core and at its center is that you are a child of God. So much so that God names it as a way that, uh, or St. John names it as a way that the Father loves each and every one of you. God loves each and every one of you as is own dear children. That is who we are. But here's the thing. We do not become God's children without a price. For all of us to be, become God's children, you see, God had to give up his very own child. In fact, God gave up His only Son. So God's Son, our Savior Jesus the Christ, obeyed His Father's will and willingly took upon Himself our flesh and blood. He lived the perfect sinless life in our place that we could not possibly live. He was crucified and punished for all of our sins, even the sins of the whole world. And then Christ went to the cross and he died that death that we should have died. But he did it so that we would become children of God. 
And Christ then rose from the dead. And just two weeks ago we rejoiced and we heard those words that he is not here. He is risen. Christ rose from the dead to destroy the power of death and to ensure eternal life for all who would believe. For all of his children. So who am I? I am a child of God. Not because of any worthiness or merit within me. Not because of anything that I have done. Despite the things that I have done wrong. My most important identity. The identity that lives out over and above any other that may cling to me. Is the fact that I am a child of God. Of God. And so are you. Verse 3 of our reading. Anyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. And that is our Christian faith. God has made you his child through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That has been given to you, poured out on you freely at your baptism where you were welcomed into God's family. And that is how we are to live our lives then together as God's children. So we are all God's children together. We are one big family. And as God's children, we do certain things. We act certain ways. We relate to one another differently here than out in the world. Firstly, as God's children, we know that God is our Father. We approach Him in prayer as children come to their Father, knowing that He will return to us only what is best in our life, even if it is not what we think is best. As God's children, we gather together as His family. And where do we gather? God's very own house. This place here that on Sunday morning is heaven on earth. Heaven and earth coming together here as we worship in spirit and in truth. And what do we do when we, as God's family, his children, gather in his house? Well, God, our Father, provides for our needs. He gives us his own word from his mouth to our ears, the instruction that we need to live our lives of faith. He gives us the real spiritual food of the body and blood of his son. He gives us fellowship with one another to strengthen our bonds together with one another. And as fellow children of God, as God's family, we take care of one another. We watch out for each other. We warn one another when we go astray. And just like brothers and sisters sometimes do growing up, sometimes we want to punch each other in the face. Right? That's part of being a family. But then we praise each other for our great accomplishments. We resolve problems and disagreements with one another. And we love one another, guided by the kind of love that our Father has shown to us. So who am I? Who are you? Well, see what kind of love the Father has given to us. That we should be called children of God, and so we are. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. 
And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even in life our lives. Amen. A reminder that our offering plate is in the back, the left as you go out of church this morning. Uh, we continue with our service as in response to the hearing of God's word, we sing his praises and with the words of the Te Deum. The Te Deum begins on page 223. Please stand as we sing.
of our prayer petition by saying, Lord, in your mercy, the congregation responds by saying, hear our prayer. Lord God, in your presence, we find fullness of joy. And by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sin and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name among us in all the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give peace, O Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husband and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious fathers, your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples. Give your presence and comfort to the troubled in our midst, especially those in need of healing. We pray for Marvin, Marilyn, Jill, Ethelie, Tom, Laura, Bill, John, Larry, and all those who we now name silently upon our hearts according to their needs. We pray your healing hand upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear All these things and whatever else you know that we need. Grant to us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our prayers by singing, Lord, have mercy. It's on the middle of page 227.
uh, marriage and family conference. So there's uh, in information about that there. Uh, that's next Friday evening and Saturday morning. Um, today, uh, the, the Trinity School of Music is having their first recital. That's at 4 o'clock um, at Trinity in the Sanctuary. Uh, my two boys will be playing, uh, and they're making the teachers play too, so I have to play something. Uh, but there's an opportunity if you want to hear some music today uh, that is there. Uh, let's see. Uh, voters meeting after church on Sunday, so please stick around and do the business of the church. Is there any other announcements on this thing? With that, we'll close our last hymn, 480. 480. 